Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. So I've been talking about how Jeanette, Janet Braun, has been accused of being a rogue attorney as well as some other things, and now is suing several creators for defamation, along with her client, Lauren the Mortician. Now, Lauren the Mortician isn't her only client, and another client of hers has made allegations against Janet Braun that are really, really serious, and in fact are far more serious than the one she's suing over. So we're going to talk about how this happens, what those allegations are, and what this means for Jeanette Braun, because she's been painted into a really difficult corner, and um, it's mostly her fault. Mostly. So how does this start off? Well, a creator by the name of IMCC Suarez uh, puts out a video, and it's a pretty good video. I've got a minor quibble with it, but it's a pretty good video. The minor quibble is that she says fair use act when she means just fair use, but otherwise it's a great video. And that's not really a criticism because she's not a lawyer. She just did a good analysis. So because of that, she got a copyright takedown request from Jeanette Braun. And we're going to review that because it's got some things in it that are worth reviewing. And so this is sort of in reverse order because it's an email thread, but we've got YouTube copyright saying, hello, we received the copyright infringement notification below regarding your videos. We believe your content is protected by fair use, fair dealing, or a similar exception to copyright protection. Uh, fair use is United States. Fair dealing is Canada. They have different rules slightly. Uh, we are writing to let you know we do not plan to remove your videos at this time. So YouTube looked at the videos and said, nah, these are fine. We're not doing anything. You have control over the availability of videos on your channel, including the ability to delete them if you choose. Please be advised it is possible the copyright owner will approach you directly to request removal or take other action. The other action here is you could be sued, right? That's something you should always think about if you're getting a copyright you know, claim or takedown or anything made against your content. This email is not intended as legal advice. If you're interested in more information regarding your options in this matter, you may wish to consult a qualified attorney. So, and they also redact the complainant's physical address and phone number. Okay, that's good because it saves me some time. Now, one thing that I thought was a little interesting here is we've got this message threat level high in purple text. Is that from like a virus scanner or? Yeah, I don't know what that is, but it, it seemed odd. Um, turn those things off, like those messages, if you're sending messages out. But so, um, copyright owner, Dumb Blonde Productions, LLC, relationship to owner, attorney. And so this is from Braun IP Law. Infringement of Work 1. Stop Art Theft by Dumb Blonde Productions, LLC. Now, I'm just going to say, I mean, you can name your company nearly anything you want, but eventually you should consider, if your company is sort of a growing concern, that you may be involved in litigation around it. And so company names, you should think of how they would look on a statement of claim or how they might sound to a jury. Um... Uh, you might have some blondes on your jury. I don't think corporate lawyers think about this one, but it's one you should think about because I've seen some really entertaining company names, things like, you know, we do crime or something, you know, those kinds of equivalents. So uh, description of your copyright work um, and the audio or visual audio work originally posted on TikTok and they give a URL. Now I followed that URL and it said the video was taken down. So... Uh, okay, so timestamp 00 to 0 0.07. Okay, that's not a whole lot of time. It's also an unusual way to phrase a timestamp, but whatever. I'm going to assume that's seven seconds of content. Infringement of word two. I think that's supposed to be work two. Uh, again, proofreading good. Um, Demp's worst date stories. Okay, and there's another video. I didn't follow this one. I don't really care about the worst date stories, but yeah. Timestamps. Um, and they list timestamps. Now, here's where we're going to get into Braun's 
in you know their analysis and i've got some comments on that so they say while the burden of proving fair use is on the infringer and not the copyright owner uh, that's true in court there are other places where there that may differ uh, a fair use analysis has been performed and no fair use was found um, note that no analysis is actually attached here either i would have included some details about the analysis if you want people to do that uh, i say no analysis i'm that's not entirely correct there's a very very brief analysis among other things fair use does not apply where there's when there's no public interest in or for the infringing work now this is a theory that Jeanette Braun has been advancing and basically her claim is your works are defamatory and she applies defamatory to a standard that I don't think defamation lawyers would typically go with but basically seems to amount to we don't like what you're saying about us um, which isn't really the test but and so she's saying because they are false statements of fact which most of them are opinion, but regardless, um, she says that because of that, there's no public interest and therefore no fair use exception applying to copyright. This is a bit of an interesting theory, and I don't think it's going to work out for her, but good for her thinking outside the box. The Supreme Court of the United States has ruled the dissemination of false statements of facts does not provide a public interest. There can be no public interest when the infringing work is disseminating false statements of fact and the infringing work is disseminating false statements of fact. Further, commercial speech is not afforded the same broad free speech protections as non-commercial speech and the infringing work is commercial speech. Well, sure, it's commercial speech in that it's on a monetized YouTube channel, but the notion that is being presented, like, yes, commercial speech might not be at the same level. However, it's not just because it's commercial. It is the nature of the speech that needs to be looked at. It is the nature of what's going on. So for example, a pure advertising message might enjoy less free speech protections than say a political commentary, even if that political commentary happens to be sold for money. Uh, in fact, the political commentaries might be at a very high level of free speech protection. This analysis is not going so well. So, also, the Ninth Circuit decision requiring the rights holder perform a fair use analysis prior to submitting a takedown is not binding in the Sixth or Seventh Circuits where the lawsuit may be filed. Now, here's the thing. If you do file a lawsuit in the Sixth or Seventh Circuit, I bet your lawsuit is a great way to get that decision to become binding in the Sixth or Seventh Circuits where the lawsuit may be filed. Because you don't have good facts on your side here. Uh, the other thing is that a DMCA notice just requires you to say under penalty of perjury that you have a good faith belief that it's not authorized by law, which kind of just says that by the ver very virtue of the fact that you're making that statement that you have conducted a good faith analysis. Just, just a thought there. Um, I would want to be really careful about any statements I'm putting in under penalty of perjury. But, you know, you do you, boo-boo. Um... You take your chances. I am submitting this request to meet the requirements for naming Google slash YouTube as a defendant. I'm required to give you the option to utilize the safe harbor provided by the DMCA. So what this means is that the DMCA, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, includes provisions that basically provide um, protection for intermediaries, but that protection is contingent on you following certain steps when you receive a uh, you know a takedown request otherwise you might be at risk of being sued so she's telling youtube i will sue youtube as well if this doesn't you know if you don't do whatever so youtube has opted out of being able to utilize the dmca safe harbor for complaint numbers in my past reports 
why are you putting your past reports in here? There's no reason for that included in, in this report. It kind of sounds whiny, but okay. Um, YouTube is not just operating as an intermediary platform. It is operating as a judiciary by deciding infringement is fair use. This statement is ridiculous and dumb. And I would put big red circles around it if this appeared in a law student's assignment. Um, so what they're saying is basically you're acting as a judge instead of acting as an intermediary. But people, ordinary people, make decisions about law all the time. So as an example, the law might say... You can't speed above 100 miles or kilometers per hour, you know, whatever the limit in a particular area is, and, you know, whatever uh, units of measurement you're using in your own country. Um, but there's exceptions for necessity, i.e. you can break certain laws if there is a necessary purpose. And maybe you've got someone in the back who is giving birth and you're trying to get to the hospital. Well, you need to decide, does that count as necessity to allow you to go faster than the speed limit to drive to that hospital? You're not acting as a judiciary when you decide that your actions are necessary to get to the hospital in time. You're just acting as a person. Uh, similarly, a police officer doesn't have the power to convict you for committing assault. Um... They can decide that you're con committing assault and arrest you for that, but they're not acting as a judiciary. Eventually, that question will be decided by a judge. You'll be brought in front of a judge and you'll either have a trial or you'll plead out or whatever else, but that question gets decided by a judge. The police officer is not acting as a judiciary if they arrest you because they see you punch somebody. This is a ridiculous statement, and what the heck? So, I am anticipating YouTube will also waive its ability to utilize the safe harbor with this request. After all, the infringer, and they list the YouTube URL, IMCC Suarez, check them out, great content, has indemnified YouTube and will be liable to cover YouTube's defense costs. I suspect that that was a statement for IMCC Suarez. YouTube has no incentive to utilize the DMCA safe harbor. Again, this sounds whiny. If you don't like how the DMCA works, maybe call your local Congress critter or politician and they will give your request the consideration it deserves, which is probably none. But, like, why is this in here? So... YouTube does not have the authority to determine whether my use of my client's works of authorship is fair use. By your own reasoning, neither do you. The fair use question is a mixed question of fact and law. Reviewing courts should appropriately defer to the jury's findings of underlying facts, but the ultimate question whether those facts amount to a fair use is a legal question for judges to decide de novo. Okay. So, unless YouTube, or you as an employee of YouTube, are a federal judiciary, you do not have the power to determine whether use is fair or not. No, they can just form an opinion and act based on that opinion. That is what people are allowed to do all the time. To state the obvious, the rule comes from the Supreme Court of the United States, which of course has jurisdiction over YouTube. Yeah, okay. Um, you could have not stated that. It would have improved your writing just a thought <laughs> remove the stolen art from the video issue the takedown immediately and prevent future uploads from appearing on the platform i actually having seen the video uh tend very strongly to agree with youtube's analysis which is that i think it falls very squarely within fair use or fair dealing in canada so they then state as required I have a good faith belief that the use of the material in the manner complained of is not authorized by the copyright owner, its agent, or the law. The information in this notification is accurate and under penalty of perjury, I am the owner or an agent authorized to act on behalf of the owner 
of an exclusive right that is allegedly infringed by Jeanette M. Braun. Now it then goes on to include a litigation hold notice, and this is going to also be funny. So we're going to talk about this a little bit. So you are hereby put on notice of the copyright owner's intent to litigate and to name Google slash YouTube as a defendant should YouTube waive its protections under the DMCA. So we plan to sue you is what this says. And because we plan to sue you, you have to hold on to documents. You cannot throw them out. You can't destroy them because those documents might be relevant for the trial later. So please institute a litigation hold for the reported account and do not delete any electronic data YouTube has stored for the reported video or reported content, which is a habitual violator of copyright rights. Huh. Interesting. My client currently has the intent to institute litigation and reserves all rights and remedies available to it. Hold any funds payable to the infringer. Um, that's not actually normally part of a litigation hold. That actually might be a problem. <laughs> uh, should YouTube possess a general liability insurance policy or a comparable coverage, it may be required to send this letter to them within 24 hours of receipt. Neglecting to do so may lead to the insurance policy declining coverage for your defense. Additionally, please furnish me with your name of your insurance carrier within the same time frame. Now, here's the thing. I doubt, Lee, I doubt that YouTube is relying on insurance for all of this. I suspect that YouTube is relying on the fact that they are YouTube and have so much money and lawyers on staff, probably other lawyers, just, uh, you know, the picking up of a phone. So their insurance coverage is just by sort of gesturing towards their giant silos full of money. And when I say giant silos, I'm picturing like Scrooge McDuck, like people swimming in it. They've got to, you know, like that is how much money they have. So like, hey, you've got to notify your insurance carriers like, we could buy several insurance carriers. It, no. To protect against spoliation of data, YouTube must stop all data deletion and destruction processes it has for the YouTube account. Um, a lot of this is just going to be standard language, and there's some indications that this is standard language that she has borrowed from a previous document. Um, and she hasn't been in practice that long, some of these indications suggest that she may have borrowed this language from somebody else entirely. I can't say for certain, it's just suggestive. Um, I should note this happens in law all the time. I don't think it's improper, although there is a lawsuit currently pending over suing somebody for copyright infringement over a legal filing. So, just a thought. Uh, YouTube must notify all those involved with this matter to preserve any and all data and documents in their files or in those they can access. This would include both hard copy documents and electronic or magnetically stored data, which they say he includes but is not limited to the following. Now, the hilarity of telling YouTube what electronic data includes is kind of funny, but I'm guessing that they just do this so that nobody can play stupid later. But when we see all communications by email, Gmail, um, Gmail is also just email, um, Blackberry or similar device and other electronic means. Now, this is what I mean when I say I think she may have uh, cribbed this off of someone else. She's using someone else's precedent because I don't know where you'd find a whole lot of Blackberries nowadays. That seems like an unusual find. Um, so, yeah, that kind of suggests that this was borrowed from something used in the past. Uh, it's going to go on and list, you know, but we all know what these things list. Um, and then at the end, she's got her boilerplate thing noting, uh, you know, that she is the author. Jeanette M. Braun is the credit on this one. Um, or the blame, whichever you want to do. Uh, unless otherwise indicated or obvious from the nature of the transmittal, uh, the information contained in this email message is attorney privileged and confidential information. Um, it is otherwise obvious from the nature of this that it is neither of those things. 
So, yeah. Um, all of this is entertaining. But, as could be expected, what does a content creator do when they receive a notice like this? Well, a content creator immediately says, hey, I'm going to make more content about this. I'm going to discuss it because, oh my God, of course they do. Um, this is sort of basic understanding of how this works. And if you're going to be a creator's lawyer, this is something you need to understand. So this is a bit of a problem. Uh, so IMCC Suarez goes online and talks about receiving this takedown notice because... Again, of course she does. Like this was, this is not just a predictable outcome of sending this kind of notice. It is almost guaranteed in the way that like, if you go out in the rain, you will get wet. Um, so this was entirely to be expected. But uh, this results in some interesting back and forth, uh, some interesting discussion because uh, Bunny XO, who is mentioned in this, proceeds to have some comments. And so you see here, this one, hey girl, feel free to message and talk to me anytime since you wanna keep talking about me with zero context. I have not tried to take any of your videos down. So this is Bunny XO, who is the person behind the supposed takedown request, right? Matter of fact, I even told Jeanette to just leave it alone and that you didn't say anything bad about me in the YouTube video. So if she filed it on my behalf, it was after I told her to leave it alone. Huh. So the allegation you see here is that Bunny XO is saying you, you know, that she's telling the world she or she's making this comment saying, Jeanette Braun acted without instructions, which is a thing you don't do as a lawyer. As a lawyer, I am the instrument of my client's interests. I don't have my own interests in the file. Um, and to the extent that I do, I have to put them aside. And if it's something where I couldn't put them aside, I have to get off the file. Um, this is a big problem, right? This is a, so if I want to do certain things on a file, I have to actually contact my client and get their instructions, get their details as to what they're going to do because they get to make decisions like this. And so, you know, it'd be one thing if it's just like, oh, I acted in what I thought was your best interest based on the time. But here we have an allegation from Bunny XO. And again, I don't know if it's true. We're going to discuss the if it's true and if it's not true, because both of those lead to the place we want to be, which is, holy crap, this is hilarious. Um, they lead to a place that Jeanette Braun doesn't want to be. And uh, yeah, so yeah, if it's true and Jeanette Braun acted against a specific instruction not to do something, then that would be extremely improper. In fact, that would be one of those things that we would call maybe acting as a rogue attorney, which is one of those statements she's suing um, other creators for, for saying. So, yeah. Um, here's the other statement there. It's uh, This is in the comments. Uh, when there is an attorney using your name to do things to other creators, unfortunately it will be brought up. No gossip, literal hard paper facts. And Bunny XO says, that's on her, not on me. She was fired over this. Ooh, spicy. Um, so that also might open things up to uh, free Jeanette Braun from some of her confidentiality ob obligations. A lot of places allow lawyers to respond to allegations, uh, especially public allegations of wrongdoing. But the allegation here is, you know, of acting contrary to orders or contrary to client instructions. That's a pretty serious allegation. So 
if it's true, then Jeanette Braun has some issues. Um, one, she should be reporting herself to the Bar Association to say, hey, I screwed up. Two, she would have an ethical obligation to correct misrepresentations that she made. Like she would have to email the affected people, which seems to be YouTube and IMCC Suarez to say, hey, I said some things. I didn't actually have permission to make those statements. I don't actually represent Bunny XO for this matter. Um, and she'd have an ethical obligation to make those corrections. Now, I expect that if she does make those corrections and tell, you know, the affected people, hey, um, this is not actually true, that we'd hear about it. I So I'm going to be watching to see if we get a hilarious video from IMCC Suarez, and if we do, I'm going to have some comments about it too. So that's possibility number one, is if the allegations made by Bunny XO are true. Possibility number two is that they're false. Bunny XO could be, and I'm not saying is, could be, throwing her lawyer under the bus to get out from under this criticism because this is a growing disaster that is affecting more and more clients of Jeanette Braun. Um, it's becoming a bit of a problem for some of them. So um, this is something that they might have an int or that Bunny XO might be trying to say like, listen, I screwed up, but I'm going to blame my lawyer instead. Okay, cool. Um, this is something that happens when you're a lawyer. Sometimes your clients um, want to throw you under the bus. So um, the allegations made by Bunny XO are against Ms. Braun are actually probably more serious than any of the allegations in the, the defamation suit that she filed. So that would open up Jeanette M. Braun to then file a defamation suit against her client. But there's reasons why she might not do that. Like a lawyer who gets a reputation for suing their clients tends to have some problems. Um, lots of lots of clients are not going to be super keen on that, especially creators who might, you know, might have issues here. Um, there's other things like if Bunny XO is lying about Braun and throwing her under the bus, well, then this whole thing about she was fired over this might actually be a reason why Jeanette Braun would have to end the attorney-client relationship with Bunny XO. If it's false, I think Braun pretty much would have to fire Bunny. Now, we might never hear about that because of confidentiality and privilege and all of those fun things, but this is turning into a ever-expanding disaster and cluster F that... <laughs> mm. So... How do you avoid this? Well, you avoid this by not trying to bully the internet. This, all of this was avoidable by good advice about how to manage your reputation online and not by, I mean, every indication seems to be copyright bullying here as opposed, you know, to suppress people talking bad and it, particularly Bunny XO has made statements about using this process to take down videos critical of her. Hmm, that's a problem. So this is going to continue to be funny. Um, at least it looks like it. Uh, this is, I have no idea how this keeps happening, but it is what it is. Um, so I got more to more things to talk about on this one and more developments are expected. I'm going to be watching to see, do we get a public, uh, do we get a correction of the record from Jeanette, Janet Braun or what can we infer from that? We'll have to talk about that as it happens. We'll have to talk about uh, some of these other details and um, yeah. The other problem here is that, you know, 
Ms. Braun seems keen to sue people over defamation. She's very quickly running into the problem that these defamation suits might have the issue of how do you get to damages from even if you assumed that somebody said something false, which I don't think is, I don't think they're, they're there. Um, but if you get to defamation, she's creating a real problem for herself on damages because there's just so many different things that might have harmed her reputation, many of which are just her own legal filings. And that's a problem. You know, if you embarrass yourself, then you might diminish the degree to which you can claim on defamation. Anyway, thank you guys for joining me. I hope you found this one to be interesting and educational. I'm going to keep covering this issue because it makes me laugh. And yeah, um, Jeanette loves to sort of cover or she seems to really like the influencer sphere. And, you know, she's got influencers who do all sorts of things from like the mortician thing to makeup influencers. She's ventured into it herself with her own TikToks. Um, that's great. I want to suggest that maybe she could consider uh, a makeup collaboration because, and like, there's all sorts of possibility here. Just here's the makeup collaboration. I think it's, think about it. Uh, you're really, you might be the voice for this particular brand. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Um, I want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, CCFR, Canada's National Firearms Association, the Canadian Shooting Sports Association, and uh, Lembas for the Elf, as well as at the $20 level, uh, Lindsay Metcalf, Larry Kalniak, Kyle Fox, uh, Drunk All of the Baileys, Cameron Johnson, Andrew Elsich, Vicky, and Dorky Dane. Thank you as well to my $10 supporters who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you for watching. Hope this has armed you with knowledge. See you next time.